Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. More than bragging rights in the state of South Carolina at stake tonight. A potential playoff spot on the line for Clemson as the Tigers welcome the Gamecocks to Death Valley. Incredible day of college football on this final Saturday of November. Alabama routing Auburn. Great finish between Ohio State and Michigan. Washington a winner yesterday. Wisconsin at six. Penn State at seven. Both won today. And now time for the most exciting 25 seconds in college football as they uncage the Tigers for the run down the hill, getting ready to face their rival. The players take the field. We welcome you to the booth. Dave Pash alongside Greg McElroy. Tom Luganville will join us in a minute. Well, Deshaun Watson's a true junior, Greg, but this will be his final home game. And as you know from winning a national championship at Alabama, when you're the quarterback and you're trying to win a title, all eyes are on you. The good thing is the bigger the moment, the better Deshaun Watson seems to play. You think about the national championship game last year against Alabama, one of the best performances we've seen from a collegiate quarterback in some time. From a player's perspective, there are few things bigger than playing against your in-state rival in prime time on Rivalry Saturday. Now, last time in this stadium, it did not go according to plan, Tom, but they are pleased with the way they've responded. Well, they certainly are, Greg, and the one thing they learned off of the loss to Pittsburgh is that you've got to appreciate a win and how hard it is to win. One game, forget about eight, forget about ten, appreciate winning. And now that they have that frame of mind going forward, this coaching staff thinks this team is in a better place heading into this December than they were last year at this time. And Tom Clemson trying for its third straight win against South Carolina. The Gamecocks are bowl eligible, and they are trying to ruin their rival season tonight. Tempers flare in pregame, pushing and shoving, leading into this rivalry game. Kickoff, Clemson, South Carolina from Death Valley is next. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. The United Mileage Plus Explorer Card. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. It's the second longest consecutively played series in college football. The 114th meeting. They've met every year since 1909. Clemson has won the last two. This is Will Muschamp's first time in this rivalry as the new head coach at South Carolina. Dabo Sweeney is 3-5 and five as the head coach of Clemson against South Carolina. Gamecocks won the toss. They will receive, and they are among the best in college football. In kick returns, Debo Samuel returned a kick for a touchdown a week ago. Here's Samuel from the two. And he's up to the 26-yard line. Well, South Carolina started the year two and four, but the Gamecocks have won four of their last five. And a big reason why, a true freshman quarterback, Jake Bentley. He's only turned the ball over twice. Both of those came in their loss, which was at Florida. He's thrown six touchdown passes, but none in the last two games. They need him, obviously, to play well to have a shot tonight against the number four team in the country. His backfield mate is also a true freshman, Rico Dowdle, who missed the first four games of the year with an injury. Rushed for over 200 yards last week. 
Bentley to the air on first down, and it's over the head of another true freshman, Brian Edwards. Boy, there was a lot of contact down the sideline. No penalty flag as Bentley runs to the sideline to get the call here for second down. Jake Bentley's done such a good job of providing enthusiasm. He stepped in as the starting quarterback. Every single player on the team responded as a result. He's been a joy to watch early in his career. But it's so loud right now, he can't hear. His offensive lineman can't hear. You and I can't even hear. Bentley with time on second down, and the pass batted down, and he had his tight end Hayden Hurst open downfield. Christian Wilkins knocked it down. Well, last year, South Carolina went 3-9. and nine. Steve Spurrier left South Carolina. Sean Elliott was the interim coach. Will Muschamp was the D coordinator at Auburn. He's done better this year, Greg, than a lot of people thought he would. You can make a strong case that Will Muschamp is the coach of the year in the SEC. Given what he inherited, he's done a great job with a lot of young players playing college football for the first time. That's quite a statement when Nick Saban goes undefeated again at Alabama. Light clock down at two. Bentley on third and long. Let's it fly. It's tipped and dropped. Oh, Daniel couldn't hang on for the interception, but South Carolina is going to punt the ball. Bentley understands how good this pass rush is. Have some guys in his lap. Delivers a ball that's a little bit too high and inside. Very fortunate that did not end up in Dorian O'Daniel's hands. So Sean Kelly on the punt. Artavis Scott, who is one of four Clemson juniors, are going to graduate. And that includes Deshaun Watson. So he's playing his final home game. That punt checks up and is touched by a South Carolina player at the 31, so only a 42-yard punt. Well, two years ago, Deshaun Watson etched himself in the Book of Legends for Clemson. He beat South Carolina playing with a torn ACL. It wasn't revealed until after the game that he had that. You see his numbers, eight touchdowns in two games against the Gamecocks. From 13 interceptions this year, so turnovers have been a problem for Watson and the Tigers this year. Their one loss was two weeks ago against Pitt. And it's going to be the tailback, Wayne Gallman, on first down. And a big run to start the game. They finally wrap him up at the 47. Interesting to see how much they give it to Wayne Gallman. His carries are down, Greg, from a year ago. But his production in terms of yards per game, yards per carry, is right there with last year. He's fresh. Only 160 carries on the season to this point. He's prime for the December and January run. Watson's pass just off line. Tried to hit Leggett as we look at tonight's impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Wayne Gallman. They need to establish the line of scrimmage. They're going to need to run the ball more effectively as they move forward. Jordan Leggett, all he does is score touchdowns and score touchdowns in crunch time on the defensive side. Went with two defensive linemen for South Carolina, Stallworth and English. They're going to need to play well up front to limit the ground attack. Gallman trying to get outside. Good pursuit by the Gamecocks. A little shove by Holloman after Gallman was out of bounds. A gain of about five in the South Carolina territory. And a big third down here for the Gamecocks defense as you look what Gallman did against Wake Forest in that bounce back win for Clemson last week. The Tigers scored touchdowns on their first four possessions. Watson to throw on third and six. And a sliding catch made for a first down by Hunter Renfro. Great job by Deshaun Watson being patient, moving, finding a window to throw it through. And he hits one of the most reliable slot receivers in college football in Hunter Renfro. Copy that. Renfro missed four games this season with a wrist injury. But he's back healthy now. Watson and that run pass option dumps it off. Artavis Scott near the 20-yard line. 
And it's a gain of 17. That is so hard to defend. Now Clemson going up tempo here. Watson hits Scott again. And pushed out of bounds near the 16-yard line by Rashad Fenton. That tempo makes it so difficult on the defense. Trying to get lined up, looking at the formation that the offense is giving you, and getting where you need to be depending on what the defensive assignment is. Sean Watson is taking a nice, easy completion. Here's Gallman, and he is taken down in the backfield. And Wrapped up by Jonathan Walton, the South Carolina middle linebacker. Gamecocks have been without their best defender this year. Sky Moore is taking a medical redshirt. But this defense has played pretty well. They are number one in the SEC in turnovers forced. They've been very good down here in the red zone. That's what 2016 football is all about. Third down defense and how you play in the red area. So it's third and long now for Watson and the Tigers. Watson over the middle. It's too hot to handle for Mike Williams. South Carolina opting for a blitz, which left man-to-man -man coverage on Williams. Watson anticipated the throw, but his receiver wasn't ready to get his head around in time for that 100-mile-an-hour fastball. That was a laser. Adrenaline flowing for Watson. Greg Hugel, 13 of 16 on the season, 39-yard attempt. And it's blocked! That's a big stand for South Carolina, and as we saw earlier today, there are no gimmies on special teams in rivalry games. Case in point, Ohio State missing a couple of short field goals. Big stand from this young defense. Tough start for the South Carolina offense, but Clemson unable to cash in. Will Muschamp likes what he sees. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Hampton by Hilton as part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lou. Clemson was moving the ball. They got a tackle for a loss on a run play on second down, then third and 10, threw an incompletion. On fourth down, the field goal attempt was blocked. Eric Jones with a second block field goal for South Carolina. The Gamecocks take over on their 22. Jake Bentley off a play fake, lobbing it for his tight end, and it's picked off at the 47-yard line by Jadar Johnson. That is the fifth interception for Johnson this year. Just a poor decision from the freshman quarterback. He did have Hayden Hurst running down the numbers but he has to account for the safety that's deep and over the top he overshoots Hurst just ever so slightly and it ends up in the hands of Johnson who did a great job reading the quarterback's eyes and getting to the spot you just never know even though Bentley has handled things so well this year how a true freshman is going to perform in just his second road game and a rivalry game that means so much to both teams Clemson starts in South Carolina territory. Here is Goldman with a big running lane. Near the 39-yard line, they're going to mark him about a yard and a half short of the line to gain. This running game is going to be so important for the Clemson Tigers as they move forward. Playing for an ACC championship game next week, obviously, and to beat their bitter rivals, they need to be balanced offensively. Here's Watson on the keeper. And Watson has not run the ball a ton this year. He rushed for a thousand yards last year. He's just over 400 this season. His rushing attempts, though, after week 10 is when he really got going as a rusher. He has five career 100 yard games. All five came after week 10 in the 2015 season. So expect him to use his legs more as the games grow more important. Play fake here. Watson taking a shot, going for Williams. Williams comes down with it. An incredible catch. Touchdown, Clemson.
Just an incredible individual effort by Mike Williams. He's a big boy. Six foot three, 225 pounds with a whole lot of vertical. Not many corners can defend that. And Jamarcus King, the corner, who was defending is 6'2". Williams, who is a true junior, but he's playing his final game as well, going to the NFL. That's his eighth touchdown catch of the season. It was a spectacular grab to get the Tigers on the board first here in Death Valley. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Book at Hampton.com for a guaranteed discount. And in part by Cadillac. Well, you have to wonder with Lamar Jackson's struggles the last couple of games, I say struggles in relative terms based on what he did earlier in the season as Clemson has just dominated teams in the first quarter. Deshaun Watson continues to make plays like that. Clemson uh, Clemson wins these next two games tonight in the Virginia Tech in the ACC title game and makes the college football playoff. Could he get back into the Heisman discussion? Yes, he's already in it. A big game tonight. Obviously, Lamar Jackson has stumbled the last two weeks. It's wide open right now. A big performance can influence a lot of voters. Samuel will take a knee. It'll come out to the 25 as we take a look at tonight's good hands play. Brought to you by Allstate. Verticals all across the board. Leggett does the most important job to take that safety. Steven Montak, watch the safety on the right side influence, leaves you one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Deshaun Watson says, my guy is better than your guy. He trusts him and throws a beautiful ball to the corner of the end zone. And Mike Williams times his jump perfectly, bringing it down in a contested catch. He might be better than most guys, Mike Williams. Perhaps <laughs> the best receiver in the country. Here's true freshman running back, Rico Dowdle. Not much, maybe a yard to the 26. Christian Wilkins, who is a sophomore, one of five finalists for the Nagurski Trophy. Best defensive player in the, in the country, made the play there. Well, in South Carolina has got to run the football to provide some balance with this noise. The South Carolina offense cannot become one-dimensional behind a true freshman that has been backed up against his own end zone the entire first quarter. And Tom Bentley threw a pick on the last South Carolina possession. Here's a shovel pass, and Clemson's all over it. Hayden Hurst wrapped up and thrown down by true freshman Dexter Lawrence, who is going to be a good one. That shovel pass is going to hurt the heart of this Clemson fan base. You think back to the pit game over and over and over again. The Panthers were having success with that internal shovel pass. It appears as though Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, they figured out how to stop that one. Brings up a third and eight for South Carolina and the freshman QB. Bentley hit as he throws, and the pass over shot. Try to hit Debo Samuel. Cleland Farrell was in the backfield for the Tigers, and it'll be another punt for South Carolina. Tell you, Greg, one of the things that's going to be difficult for Jake Bentley going forward is this Clemson team can rush the passer with just four men. So that allows them to do a lot more things to confuse the quarterback on the back end because they don't have to rush five or six to get after him. It's going to be a long day if he sees a lot of looks on the defensive side. Scott is under it, and the fair catch made at the 35. Well, on the last possession for Clemson, Deshaun Watson got his 99th career touchdown. He goes for number 100 when we come back. Thank you, Adnan. It is a beautiful night here in Clemson, South Carolina. A packed house for this rivalry game between the Tigers and Gamecocks. And Deshaun Watson already a touchdown pass. And now here's a pitch to Scott on the end around, and he's free. Past the 40-yard line. And finally run out of play at the 30. There is a penalty marker down. 
35-yard gain, but it looks like it's coming back. Flag is thrown at the 45 in South Carolina territory. During the run, holding number seven offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and 10. Yeah, first and 10, that's going to put the ball. They threw the flag at the 45 of South Carolina, so being that it's a spot foul, Clemson still gets 10 yards out of it. First down from the Tiger 45. Mike Williams, a long time to have to engage a defender. It's a good call. He did not let go early enough. Good job by these officials seeing that right hand grab the left shoulder of the corner. Here's Goldman. Beautiful cutback. And Goldman to the 47 of South Carolina picking up eight yards. Well, Deshaun Watson is going to graduate next month along with three other juniors. He is not officially declared yet, but Dabo Sweeney's basically declared him. He said, you're going to take part in senior day, and we know you're not coming back. Sweeney's likely going to be a first-round pick. He's had a brilliant three years at Clemson, despite the injury two weeks ago. He keeps it here, gets the first down. He paid for it with a big hit by D.J. Smith. Craig, there's been only two players that been responsible for 100 or more touchdowns. Taj Boyd, a great college player. Phillip Rivers still going in the NFL. Watson's going to join those two. Not to mention he's done it in three years. He has been absolutely remarkable. Even as a freshman, Cole Stout started a few games. He was banged up from time to time. So to think about the numbers he's acquired in his time here in Clemson is truly remarkable. Goldman has the first down. To the 35-yard line. So that was the first down play. Excuse me, picking up about seven. You mentioned earlier, though, Greg, that the turnovers for Watson this year with the 13 picks. The way he's playing right now, is Clemson good enough to win a championship? Can they compete with Alabama? They played him very well in the title game last year. They can absolutely compete with anybody. He's as good a quarterback as there is in college football. Here's Scott on that. Little touch pass, and he does not get the first down. It is going to be important for Deshaun Watson, though, to be smart as they move forward. Starting the night against a South Carolina defense that is opportunistic, not very deep, but opportunistic when the ball's in the air. He has to be smart in his decision making. A couple weeks ago, two interceptions thrown into the end zone. He's got to avoid predetermining and allow his receivers to work in space. See how he handles third and three here from the 35-yard line of South Carolina. Gamecocks bring pressure. Watson hits Williams, able to hang on to it. First down to the 30-yard line. Such a big body. It's so easy to throw the slant route into coverage when you know you have a big target to hit. Watson dumping it off to Scott. And looks like he just gets accidentally bumped out of play by Jamarcus King, who got blocked and had his back to Artavis Scott, but actually made the play to gain a four. That's a tremendous effort from Jamarcus King. He just kept going, spun, got a little bit lucky. But hey, luck is part of it from time to time. Third time Clemson's been in this situation. They have a touchdown. They have a missed field goal. As Watson keeps, steps out of play, short of the line to gain at the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, Greg, that's three designated runs now that they have put the ball in the hands of their quarterback, Deshaun Watson. As you referenced earlier, this is the time to be showing what's going to happen with this offense when the quarterback is an integral part of the run game. It changes how you defend this offense. Here's third and one. It's Goldman trying to pick a hole. He gets stood up. Got to be close. Kelsey Griffin was there first. DJ Wanham as well for South Carolina, and it's fourth down. He's going to be just short. Deshaun Watson not even thinking about coming off the field. Arch rival, six inches to go. you got to trust your offensive line that they're going to get enough push to convert on this fourth down. Guys, this is going to be close. I'm standing right here, right here at the yard marker, and where that ball is lined up, this is going to be within an inch. 
maybe two at the most. Well, just looking at the yellow line here, Tom, which we uh, obviously have up, up, up here in the booth. It oh, no, it's like here, too. I can see it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It does look like he's uh, short. Uh, and, and, again, after that block field goal, too, you wonder if Dabo's thinking, you know, things have not gone well here early from a special team standpoint. We're going to go for it. And the offense is staying on the field. And this is an opportunity for Dabo Sweeney to tell his offensive line, hey, I trust you. I know you're going to get me enough to convert on this fourth down. This is a trust factor, and it's also a challenge to the big boys up front. You run your field goal unit out, you're basically telling them, I don't think you can get it for me. I like the decision here from Dabo Sweeney in this front and offense. Fourth down and inches on the 20 yard line and Goldman powers and it looks like forward progress will give him the first down at the 19. Goldman got stood up by TJ Holloman and Kelsey Griffin but he did get enough to move the sticks. It's a really good play by TJ Holloman though. There was a hole but it closed quickly. Goldman just too much momentum to carry his body over the sticks. Watson off play action. Hits Williams inside the five. Williams carries defenders into the end zone. Touchdown. That is a grown man. After contact inside the five. 100th touchdown for Deshaun Watson. Second one tonight for Mike Williams. Hugel on for the point after, and it is 14 to nothing, Clemson. Deshaun Watson is hot, but Mike Williams might be hotter. He refuses to be denied, and the Tigers up big early. Off here, week 12 NFL Sunday on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern with NFL Insiders Sunday edition. Then at 11, it's Sunday NFL Countdown. Both shows stream live on ESPN. And then Monday night, it's the Packers and Eagles. Monday night countdown starts at 6, kickoff 8:15 right here on ESPN. Well, Clemson knowing that if it wins two games tonight and the next week against Virginia Tech in the ACC championship game. The Tigers are going to be in the college football playoff for the second straight year. They have been dominant in the first nine minutes of this game. Samuel from the one yard. Yep, right line. on the back end. He is met at the 22 and crunched. Want to go back to this touchdown. Number 100 for Deshaun Watson. Steven Montak has his eyes in the backfield because of the play action. The run game is going to open up massive holes in the secondary. You saw the influence right there that it had on the safety Montac. It allowed nothing but green grass for Mike Williams to work to. That's what makes this offense so incredibly difficult to defend. Not only can they beat you through the air, but when the run game gets going, that play action passing is going to get even better. Meanwhile, South Carolina just needs a first down. And they try to run the ball here. It's just the second run play they've called. And Rico Dowdle is grabbed by Lawrence and Farrell and gets a yard. Right side of this offensive line is having a tough time in the early going. Not Helms and Young. They have their work cut out for them. This is a great defensive front for the Clemson Tigers. Might start seeing a few runs to the left behind their All-American candidate, Zach Bailey, number 78. Averaging less than a yard per play here in the opening quarter. Second down and long. Bentley, wide receiver screen. And good tackle on Samuel by Marcus Edmond after a gain of about three. This is a critical third down. 
for this South Carolina offense. Their defense has been on the field entirely too long here in the first quarter. They need to give their defense a rest and try to change field position because they've been backed up this entire game. And also for Bentley, Jake Bentley, from a confidence standpoint, you just need to see the chains move. Hasn't happened yet. Will Muschamp comes out in the field and calls a timeout. The play clock was at four. So a big third down and five coming up for South Carolina. Well, look, we knew Greg coming in that you know, Clemson was going to be fired up because it's a rivalry game, but also the last time the Tigers were here, they lost. I know they bounced back last week, but you know, the fans remember how that felt two weeks ago. And Clemson looks like it's on a mission right now. Yeah, and two weeks ago, they let that one get away. They had a few turnovers, uncharacteristic interceptions in the end zone by Deshaun Watson. One late in the game that really would have iced it. They had so many opportunities to end the game against Pitt, and they just were unable to do so. They came back last week, responded extremely well against a gritty Wake Forest team, scored touchdowns on their first four possessions. So they're carrying that momentum into the night's performance. This is a scary team when they're clicking on all cylinders. And you got a true freshman quarterback dealing with this atmosphere for the first time. See how he handles third and five. And he had his receiver, but he couldn't hit him. He was trying to hit Brian Edwards, and it looked like Marcus Edmonds stumbled the corner. And Bentley just misfired. Ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage. Bentley trying to get a nice, easy slant. Big number 94, Carlos Watkins, knows he's not going to get home for the sack because it's a quick drop. Instead, he opts to put his hands up. That's a very heads-up play by one of the few seniors on this team playing their final game here in Death Valley. And how about this? A fake and back to throw is Hayden Hurst. Now he takes off to run, and he's not going to get it. Clemson was all over Hurst. Chad Smith there for the Tigers. What do you think of the decision, first of all? I think it's a little aggressive, a little early. Give your defense another chance to try to go the distance. Hayden Hurst, former baseball player. He can throw it now. Don't get it twisted. Clemson unfooled. Played a safe type of punt return. Nobody open downfield. Hurst has to run vertical. And they stop him to continue a massive momentum in favor of the Clemson Tigers. Here's C.J. Fuller getting the call. He's inside the 30 to the 28. So Deshaun Watson now at 100 career touchdowns, the third player in ACC history. In the first quarter last week, the Buck 14 on a touchdown, two touchdown passes in the first quarter tonight. And South Carolina making that decision deep in its own end, giving the ball back to a hot quarterback, risk reward. This doesn't seem like the right call at this juncture of the game. I get it, you're trying to get something going because your offense hasn't. Tigers run the ball again. Room for Fuller. He's inside the 15 down to the 13. Picked up 15 yards there. As they're giving Gallman a breather and Fuller is getting the carries. This offense makes you cover the entire field. They have a little jet sweep which changes the eye line of the linebackers. They overflow north and south gap wide open and a nice run. There for Clemson. Watson to the 11-yard line. Chris Moody makes the play for South Carolina. And Greg, you're exactly right with that eye line with the linebackers. That flow that's meant to influence the defense. All you got to do is be a half step wrong, and those eye violations will open up wide gaps, and that's how the big runs have come on the ground so far for Clemson. You say a half step against this offense, this much speed, it might be a quarter step. You're right. <laughs> Goldman hit in the backfield, keeps the feet going, but is slammed to the ground. Looked like he made it back to the line of scrimmage. See, Greg, that right there, every time we've seen Clemson tonight just line up and run the ball, South Carolina's been pretty stout. They've known exactly what's coming. They haven't had to play, pay attention to a lot of movement. It's the movement and the shifts and the motion 
that are creating havoc for South Carolina. A little surprise that hasn't been a healthy dose on every snap from Clemson. Big third down here for South Carolina's defense. You'd have to think a must stop situation here. Already down two scores early. Watson getting the call from the sideline. The play clock's at five. They're going to have to take a timeout. Or are they? Yep. Sweeney calls it right before they snap it to Deshaun. So two timeouts remaining for Clemson. Third and eight on the 11. Let's get you to the studio for an update. Here's Adnan. And Washington Adnan winning yesterday. So who right now, Greg, do you think, if you had to pick your four going into this game tonight, obviously Alabama. After that, is Ohio State one of your four, even though Penn State is going to represent the East Division in the Big Ten title game? They are. Because I would go with the best four teams. I know that Penn State or Wisconsin they're going to have the Big Ten crown. But are they truly the best team in the Big Ten? I think it's Ohio State, Clemson, of course, and then Washington. Here's Watson on third and long to the end zone. Wide open is Leggett. The easiest touchdown pass of Deshaun Watson's career. It's 20 to nothing. Watson might be right. That might put the Gamecocks to sleep. A three touchdown advantage with two minutes to go here in the first. I think Deshaun Watson likes playing against South Carolina. He understands the magnitude of this game, and he has come out ready to play. Just great influence by the underneath routes for the Clemson Tigers, which leaves Leggett, a big body, wide open, working one-on-one. -on -one. Sean Watson fired up, Dabo Sweeney loving it. Will Muschamp, his first opportunity playing here in the Palmetto Bowl, hasn't gotten off to the start he and his team were looking for. Three first quarter touchdown passes for Deshaun Watson. And as we mentioned with Lamar Jackson the last couple of weeks, the numbers not as good as they were earlier in the year where it looked like Jackson was going to run away with a Heisman Trophy. The door has been cracked open. Deshaun Watson trying to push his way through. He finished in the top three for that award last year. And he's off to a great start tonight in his final home game. They got the ACC championship game next week in Orlando against Virginia Tech. John Watson came into the season as the Heisman favorite without question. He's certainly playing like it the last couple of weeks. Debo Samuel muffs it. Ball is live. Samuel scoops and gets close to the 14, and that's it. Tigers were all over that after the muffed kickoff. Taco Bell, a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. Well, this is one of the great scenes in college football, especially at night in a rivalry game. The 114th meeting, he called it the Palmetto Bowl. That's what they started calling that a couple of years ago. Well, last year, Clemson was unbeaten in this matchup. In, yeah, against the Gamecocks, and won that game by only five. As South Carolina runs Rico Dowdle. That's one of their best offensive plays so far. That's not saying much. They get four yards. You mentioned last year, Davo Sweeney. We actually asked him about it jokingly. He said, well, you know, it was a little bit more like 12. He scored with one second remaining to make the wound look a little bit less dirty. But no doubt about it, that South Carolina team last year came ready to play under the direction of Sean Elliott. 
so far tonight had some momentum coming in their best offensive performance last week granted it was against Western Carolina but it hasn't been able to carry over play fake for Bentley and that pass got tipped again T tell you Greg Dave I'm standing right behind the offense here by the goalpost and there's a lot happening in front of young Jake Bentley's eyes just as I referenced before being able to just rush with four a lot of moving parts and components in the back end giving him some things to make him double think what he may or may not do with the ball this is some tough looks for a young quarterback the game is moving extremely fast for him so if I'm offensive coordinator Kurt Roper got to get some nice screens to take some of the pressure off and some high percentage completions for the young quarterback third down and six penalty marker down there was movement by South Carolina pre-snap before the snap false start number 77 offense five yard penalty so third down that's on Malik Young the right tackle that won't make things easier on the true freshman quarterback Jake Bentley just his sixth career start Going up against this great defense, down three scores, and now he's facing third and 11 here, deep in his own territory. That's been part of the problem. They are just way behind when it comes to field position in the early going. Can't seem to find any open receivers and having a tough time running the football against a very stout Clemson front. Clemson coming after him, and down he goes. Smoke back at the five-yard line by Ben Bowler. Think the Tigers are fired up? Think they know what's at stake? Win two and you're in. He's got to understand, Jake Bentley, that there are times where a defense is bringing more than you can block. That time, two defenders and the running back couldn't decide between the two. They both end up getting a shot on Bentley. He'll learn as he gets older to be better in protection. Artavis Scott going backwards here. Wrapped up at the 41-yard line. There's a penalty marker down, 58-yard punt. T.J. Brunson with a nice tackle on special teams. Got SEC officials the on the field. Illegal block in the back, number 19 return team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Clemson. Tanner Muse, the guilty man for Clemson. Well, Tuesday, college basketball, 9.30 on ESPN. ACC Big Ten Challenge, Michigan State and Duke from Cameron Indoor Stadium. Coach K, 8-1 against Michigan State's Tom Izzo. Well, Deshaun Watson is feeling it right now for the Tigers. Look at his career against the Gamecocks. 11 touchdowns, including three passing in the first quarter tonight. He's completing against the Gamecocks, over 75% of his throws. He's unbelievable. Watson hits Artavis Scott, has blockers, and is past the 40. And out of bounds at the 43. Boy, the way they are executing, it's not just the guys up front or receivers making catches. you got guys out there blocking like their lives depend on it right now on the perimeter. You have a defense, too, that's having a tough time dealing with some of this tempo. Gallman finds a running lane, cuts it back, and is inside the 45 of South Carolina for another first down. 13 yards for Gallman. What a start for this Clemson football team. So much disappointment two weeks ago, the last time they were here in Death Valley. Nothing to be disappointed in 15 minutes into this one. 21 points for Clemson, 7 yards for South Carolina. The Tigers are rolling after one here in Death Valley. Twelfth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. 
for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton, part of ESPN's Rivalry Series presented by Jiffy Lou. This one one-sided, 226 yards for Clemson, 21 points. Seven yards, no points for South Carolina. And the Tigers moving the ball again. They have the football at the 43 of South Carolina. This will be the 30th play they have run. 22 have been in South Carolina territory. And they run Gallman straight ahead. Fights his way to the 39 for four yards. Let's bring in Tom Luganville from the field. Yeah, you know, guys, when you when you consider this team right now and, and just how focused they are, Brent Venables, I thought, did a great job of making sure that this team was focused on the defensive side and coming into this game here as we could a big uh, win versus Wake Forest. As Watson takes oh. a shot and it's broken up, trying to hit Mike Williams again. Jamarcus King with the breakup. Go ahead, Tom, finish your story. Sure, you come off... Um, that big win on the road you've got refocused you beat wake forest and i asked brett venables point blank i said where's the emotional state of this team and he said we are better than we were a year ago at this time we're more focused we're more prepared our frame of mind and what we need to do to accomplish the task is light years ahead of where they were a year ago now consider that guys this is a team that ran into the college football playoffs hot and took alabama to the wire sense of urgency amongst the team said was never more noticeable than the week leading up to the Wake Forest game. Watson taking another deep shot here in third down. He put that one on the money but it's dropped. That would have been touchdown number four for Watson but Deion Kane normally sure handed. He's got 14 career touchdowns. Put that one on the deck. And Kane averages a touchdown every four receptions. He's a star in the making. Deion Kane is this one just hits the face mask right before it gets to the hands. Watson says, you know what? I'm going to come back to you. Deion Kane's made plenty of plays. Certainly no reason to lose faith in him. Just to finish up on the story you guys were telling about Clemson and compared to last year, they were number one going into the college football playoff. Last year, they're number four for the second straight weeks, falling two spots after that loss to Pitt. They're unable to keep the ball out of the end zone here. It'll be a touchback. But South Carolina still without a first down and trailing by 21 early second. It is almost here. Next Sunday, the college football playoff selection show, four hour special to exclusively reveal the semifinal matchups in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl on December 31st. Also, all of the other New Year's Six Bowl games in the final top 25 rankings. Where will Clemson be ranked? The Tigers leading 21 to nothing tonight. They have the ACC title game next week against Virginia Tech. Meanwhile, South Carolina, first and 10 from its 20-yard line. And they're going to run it. Dowdle off the right side. Or check that A.J. Turner picks up five yards. South Carolina with six wins, three and five in the SEC. They won by three at Vanderbilt. Knocked off Tennessee. And their only loss in their last five games was at Florida. A lot of people felt like the ceiling for this team, given the youth they were going to have to rely on and the cupboard that Will Muschamp inherited. A lot of people thought this was a four-win team. Going bowling with such a young team is a tremendous accomplishment. Those 15 bowl practices will be huge for the development of these young players. Yeah, Greg, they've started seven true freshmen, the most of any team in the country. They try to sweep it to the right. Clemson all over it. It's Bullware making the hit on Turner for a loss on the play. 78 freshmen and sophomores on this roster, 19 first-time starters. 13 true freshmen have played, and again, seven have started. Yet this is a team in the last five games that has not made a lot of mistakes. They have forced the opposition into making mistakes. Defensively, forced 14 turnovers in the last five games. Offensively tonight, haven't gotten off to a great start, but they know the formula. It's been a tremendous job by Will Muschamp this season. Tough start tonight, though, against a very good Clemson team. 
Bentley in trouble. Gets away from a defender. Now lets it fly. And it is caught for the initial first down of the game for South Carolina. It's Casey Crosby pulling it in. It's a great catch by Crosby. Not a very accurate throw, but given the circumstances, the it will take anything right now. The way Bentley was trying to escape, it's a great effort on third and long against one of the best third down defenses in college football. They'll take anything right now. That, that play netted more yards than the entire first quarter for South Carolina. Run play here on first and ten. And not much for A.J. Turner. Maybe two. Kendall Joseph in there on the stop. It's been fun to watch Turner as well. I know Dowdle has really taken over that premier role, but you think of some of the games and performances that Turner has put in. Those guys obviously both freshmen. Turner a redshirt freshman, Dowdle a true freshman. They're going to make up a very nice one-two punch in the future for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Yeah, Turner's got some home run ability, had a 75-yard touchdown against Texas A&M. They give it to Turner again on second down. He gets level. Jalen Williams and Lawrence in there on the stop. So third and long. And again, you pointed out Turner's a redshirt freshman. Donald's a true freshman. Jake Bentley's a true freshman. And actually, he should be in high school. Now, he's 19 years old. He just turned 19 the other day, but he skipped his final year of high school to go to college. Yeah, there's another true freshman on this team, Brandon McElwain. Jake Bentley's actually six months older than him. He doesn't turn 19 until May. So he's a very poised freshman, wise beyond his years, in large part due to his upbringing. His dad, of course, is the running back coach, Bobby Bentley, for the game cop. Third and six here for Jake Bentley. Has time, and now the pass high and incomplete. Pressure from Christian Wilkins again on Bentley, and South Carolina will have to punt. Samuel was the intended receiver. Just goes to show you how difficult it is to play against these four guys up front. Watch how many blockers South Carolina has. That's seven. There's only three guys truly rushing, mostly on the edge for the Clemson Tigers, and yet they still get a hit on Jake Bentley. And that's a 310-pound defensive end. It's not like it's a 260-pound guy coming off the edge. It's a big dude with a lot of speed. Clemson rolling early in the Palmetto Bowl, in large part due to the accuracy of Deshaun Watson, anticipating holes and windows in the secondary, seeing the pressure, going away from it, finding Mike Williams on a slant to convert on third down once again, and then in the red zone when the windows get very tight, getting it up and over a defensive lineman, changing his arm angle and delivering a strike to leg it for a touchdown. He's been off to an outstanding start tonight, carrying over from the performance that he had last week against Wake Forest. And he's back out there at the 22-yard line with a 21-0 lead. Throwing here to Ray Ray McLeod up to the 27-yard line, picking up five. Sean Watson just gets the ball out of his hands so quick on those perimeter screens and bubble wraps. It allows his receivers additional time to make a cut and get north and south for positive yards. Watson rolling right, throws, and the catch is made by Thompson for a first down. Let's check him with that name. All right, pal, here it's all Clemson 21 zip, and Deshaun Watson has been fantastic. A touch pass here. The receiver slipped Mike Williams, but he got taken down. Jamarcus King will get called for interference here. That'll put the ball into South Carolina territory. Jamarcus King's had a tough day. Already given up three touchdown passes. Pass and now interference, pass interference, number seven, defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. First down. 
very clear here that his back is to the ball. He just tackles Mike Williams. The easiest decision the official has ever had to make throwing that one for a pass interference penalty. Marcus King, the junior, he's got to pick it up a little bit because they keep targeting him in the passing game. Back to the ground, Gallman spinning out of one tackle, but then he goes down as Bryson Allen Williams finally gets him to the ground. No gain, maybe a loss of one. Now you mentioned Jamarcus King. Uh, the South Carolina coaches feel that he didn't play well the last couple weeks and been a struggle early on in this game for him. Clemson trying to get to the college football playoff for the second straight season. You saw our promo for next week's ACC championship game. Clemson and Virginia Tech. Here's Watson on second down, finds Leggett. And Jordan Leggett, the outstanding tight end, is to the 31, picking up 16 yards. Such a good throw from Deshaun Watson. A little bit high, but look at the way Leggett crosses face of Bryson Allen Williams. It's just a great route by one of the best tight ends in college football. Watson pumps the short throw, tried to hit the tight end again, and it was picked off by Allen Williams. Leggett could not handle the pass, and it's Watson's 14th interception of the season. Huge play for South Carolina. Trying to find some momentum somewhere. You'll take it however you can get it. Off the deflection, a tremendous effort by Allen Williams to lay out to try to steal some of the momentum from the Tigers. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Push button, get mortgage. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Bryson Allen Williams with his first interception of the season to keep Deshaun Watson from hitting Pater again. First turnover tonight by Watson and the Clemson Tigers. South Carolina though starts on its 11-yard line. Bentley rolling left, pass deflected again, incomplete. It was Cleland Farrell. They have tipped a handful of passes at the line of scrimmage so far. That's the fourth tipped ball for Bentley. Just trying to change the pocket, getting him outside, allowing him to feel a little bit more comfortable. But that's an almost impossible feat to feel comfortable as a quarterback against a front four that's as aggressive and talented as these Clemson Tiger defensive linemen. I mean, it looks like children against grown men. South Carolina trying to block this front four for Clemson. Bentley has no time to throw. Quick passing game, and the Tigers all over Samuel. He's able, though, to at least get back to the line of scrimmage. Tripped up by Kendall Joseph. The third long for South Carolina. Consecutive passes now. One trying to change the launch point. Results in a quarterback hit and an incompletion. Next play, you try to do a screen. Manageable plays offensively that have just been difficult to execute. I think this is an imperative first down considering they just got the ball back, the defense did, for this Gamecock offense. They are one of six on third down. It's third and ten. And here they come after Bentley. They're setting up the screen. Here's Turner, and he's going to get the first down. Out past the 25-yard line for the second first down tonight for South Carolina. Outstanding play call from Kurt Roper. They've been bringing some pressure on third down. What's the best thing to do against the blitz? Throw the screen and follow your very talented All-SEC candidate, All-American candidate, Zach Bailey, the left guard, number 78. Excellent execution and a perfectly timed play call. You said that's the best guard you've seen right on film He's this the year? best I've seen on tape all year. I think he's incredible. First rounder in the future. A.J. Turner. On the handoff this time to the 29, three-yard pickup. Bullwear on the stop. 
one of the few times we've been able to see this offense get ahead of the chains on first down so that they can have some type of manageable play call within the sheet that gives them a lot of options. And, and they haven't had that, Greg. They've, they've either been throwing intermediate or deep throws or getting zero yardage on first or second down. That makes third down very difficult, especially when you're having a tough time protecting and you have a true freshman quarterback that's sitting back there trying to find open receivers. Turner hit in the backfield and pummeled. Carlos Watkins greets him in the backfield. Another tackle for a loss for that Clemson front. Tom, Tom says get back on schedule. They get it to second and seven. Sure enough, tackle for a loss on second down, making it once again third and very long. Went to the screen the last time. Maybe a draw or something similar to that in order to try to catch this defense off guard. Clemson blitzing, Bentley gets screened, but somehow broke the initial tackle. He still gets sacked by three Tigers. Dexter Lawrence gets into the ground. Austin Bryant in the backfield as well. And again, Bentley just had no shot. So much pressure, so aggressive. Just bringing three right here. There's just nothing you can do as an offense when your quarterback is not anticipating the pressure. Clemson's bringing one more than South Carolina can block. Bentley has to make the adjustment and get the ball out a little bit quicker to a hot receiver. Scott up the middle with running room. Breaks a tackle. And that's a nice stop by the punter, Sean Kelly. But Clemson will start in South Carolina territory at the 45. Soon as South Carolina gets a little momentum, Clemson takes it right back with a stop and a nice return. Wait for tomorrow, it's the college football playoff selection show. Four hours to reveal exclusively the semifinal matchups of the Chick fil A Peach Bowl and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl on December 31st. This week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation, Alabama. You would think even if Alabama loses to Florida, which nobody in this planet believes they will, that they're still in the college football playoff. Ohio State's in the, in the clubhouse because Penn State's going to play in the Big Ten title game, but how comfortable should the Buckeyes be with their position right now? I, I think they should feel very comfortable. You look at the game that's going to be had next week in Indianapolis, and I think Wisconsin's probably going to win that game. Who Ohio State Beat head-to-head -head in Camp Randall. Ohio State at 11-1 with some of the great wins they have on their resume. I think should feel pretty good about where they sit. Gallman near the first down marker. So you're saying that if Wisconsin wins the Big Ten Championship, Ohio State gets in and the Big Ten champ is left out. What happens if Penn State wins? Do both Penn State and Ohio State get in? Or are the Buckeyes out and the Lions are in because they beat Ohio State? I would take... Ohio State over Penn State because they have one loss as opposed to Penn State's two. Goldman close to the first down. So even though the head-to-head -head matchup, Penn State won, you still... See, I agree with you. I think Ohio State, but Tom, I know you feel that Penn State would go instead of Ohio State. Well, State here's wins. the issue. The, the, the verbiage of a team being unequivocally better than a conference champion, that, that is reflective of whether or not said team was the team you lost to. And in this case, that would be the case for Penn State and Ohio State. And that causes a problem, in my opinion, with the committee and how they would view at Ohio State inclusion if Penn State won the Big Ten. Gallman on first down gets about seven. And we've seen teams that appear to be squarely in the top four. Think back to 2014, TCU right. in the second to last rankings release was sitting at number three. They go and blow out Iowa State big, yet they drop the number six in the rankings on the final Sunday when they actually do the selection show. But the difference is the schedule. TCU two years ago didn't really play anybody non-conference. Ohio State beat Oklahoma as Watson 
Is dragged down short of the first down marker by Steven Montek. So third down coming up here. Let's not forget about the Pac-12 champion in this equation as you're discussing the Big Ten. Because if it happens to be a one-loss Washington that comes out of that conference, uh, that's going to change the perspective of how the Big Ten is handled. Third and two for Clemson. Two wins for the Tigers, and you would think they're in the college football playoff. They got the ACC title game against Virginia Tech next week, and they get the first down easily here on the handoff to McLeod. He's tackled out of bounds, and here comes the flag. Jonathan Walton wouldn't let go. You mentioned Clemson in the college football playoff. The way they played the last two weeks, looking pretty good. After the runner was out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 28 defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. This is a good decision here. Out of bounds, driving him to the ground. Just no reason at all for LeMans to make that play especially when Jonathan Walton already has the runner McLeod in tow. So first and goal for Clemson. Here's Watson pitching it. Goldman inside the five and into the end zone. Touchdown Clemson. Beautifully executed speed option. Allen Williams commits to Deshaun Watson. He gets it out on the perimeter to Gallman, and with the full head of steam, Gallman refuses to be denied as he falls into the end zone. This offense is operating on all cylinders these last couple weeks. They ran the ball on all six plays on that drive, culminating in Gallman's 14th touchdown on the ground this season. It's 28-0, Adnan. All Clemson here. All right, add them. Clemson making a statement here. Granted, it's a team that's got five losses, but with the way Clemson played two weeks ago, losing at home to Pitt. And by the way, how about the two wins that Pitt won eight games? So they got wins at Clemson and against Penn State. Pretty remarkable when you think about it. They've been mighty close, the Pitt Panthers have, having a pretty special season. Of course, gave up a real late lead to North Carolina, ended up losing by one. After a rain delay at Oklahoma State, lost by seven, but it was tied at 38 prior to the delay. The Panther team, no eight and four, doesn't really jump out to you. That's a good football team that came in here and beat the Tigers. And you mentioned Oklahoma State. It's going to be interesting to see if they can get into the conversation, if they can beat Oklahoma next week, giving that they lost twice, but one of them is the return for South Carolina is out to the 28-yard line. Samuel, remember that loss to Central Michigan should never have happened because the play, the last play that Central Michigan won on came after the clock hit zero. Colorado's up right now in Utah. So if Colorado wins, it'll be Colorado and Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State next week. Penn State, Wisconsin meet next week in the Big Ten championship game. How about the job Mike McIntyre's done at Colorado? 2-25 and 25 in his first three years in the Pac-12 as the head coach at Colorado. Now, obviously, a couple quarters away from punching their ticket to the Pac-12 championship game. Jim Levitt just giving the Broyles a award right now for best <laughs> assistant in college football, the job he's done with that defense. Dowdle upended at the 30-yard line by Van Smith. Give it a couple. You can make an argument, fellas, that the best team in the Pac-12 won't even be playing in the Pac-12 game. SC? Absolutely. I, I think SC, if you were to take those members of the committee that have spent their life in the, in the, in the coaching profession and ask them who they don't want to play right now, that team would come out of some of those coaches' mouths. 
Bentley on second and long. His pass over the middle is caught by Hurst. He's short, though, of the first down as we near the two-minute mark. The only thing with, with, with SC, I get it right now, they look great. But you can't just dismiss the three losses and the whole quarterback argument. Yeah, they, they have a different quarterback now, but everybody else played in that oh, game. I, I, yeah, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is is the, the, the committee, and we're, and we're not talking about them being included, but you do give credence to how a team improves week in and week out. And a quarterback does make a massive difference. But my argument against your Oklahoma State is they should have never been in a game with Central Michigan to get to that point. Bentley going to take a shot on third down, and it's tipped incomplete, but flags are thrown here. Ryan Carter defending Brian Edwards. This will be a South Carolina first down. Bentley to Edwards. We're going to hear that combination an awful lot in the years Pass to come. Pass interference, number 31 defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. A good decision by the officials. Obvious that Edwards is trying to go up and make a play. And I know I'm an offensive guy. So I tend to lean heavily on the side of the offense. But I think even defensive guys would consider that a foul. Good decision by the officials. You're an offensive guy, but you scored very well on the wonder lick. And your brain <laughs> should tell you that is pass interference. No, no doubt. How much of an offensive guy you are. No doubt about it. That wasn't on the Wonder Look test. I still, it's a mystery what was on that thing. <laughs> As Bentley takes off here on first down, stays in bounds, and boy, he took a shot from Ben Bolware, but just hops to his feet, hobbles back to the huddle. It's one thing that's really impressive about Jake Bentley. I know he's 19, true freshman, should be in high school. We know all those aspects, but he's tough and he's physically mature. Already six foot three, 223 pounds. He might be a freshman on paper, but he looks like a junior physically. In trouble here. Steps up and dumps it off to Dowdle. South Carolina has two timeouts, and they're going to use one here as they're in Clemson territory for the first time tonight. So third down here coming up for South Carolina. All right, let's just finish up on, the, on this Pac-12 conversation here. If, if, if Washington right now, you, so you think Washington, if you had to pick four right now, they're in? Yes, and if they, they win the Pac-12 with obviously one loss. All right, so if Colorado wins tonight and then upsets Washington, can you make a case for them, or is the Pac-12 left out again? Uh, I think they would be left out. Colorado, yes, they have the two losses. One is to USC. One is obviously to Michigan in a very tough game in Ann Arbor, but they just don't really have the quality wins. They, of course, in that scenario, they would have beaten Washington, but their really only other very yeah. quality win would have been against Utah. So I, I think that there's just not a lot to look at from their resume to warrant being included in the top four. Which would mean two Big Ten teams. Yes. So basically, if Washington loses next week, you're going to see two Big Ten teams in the college football playoff as that pass sails high and complete. Because Ohio State's going to get in, you would think, and then Penn State or Wisconsin, whoever wins that game. But again, Washington would have to lose next week, and I'm not sure they're going to. They're playing really well right now. They dominated Washington State in the Apple Cup yesterday. It's tough to find a weakness with Washington. They run the ball efficiently. They force turnovers. They're good along the defensive front, which is one of the most important parts of building a championship team. And they're very good at quarterback with a Heisman candidate themselves. And Jake Browning. South Carolina trying to pin Clemson deep. And they did. And the officials are going to talk about it. And now they're saying touchback. They crossed the plane. So it is a touchback. Take a look at it just to be sure. Was it secured? The momentum carries him into the end zone. Oh, by the kicking team. That's a touchback. First down into 20. All right, let's go ahead and bring in Tom into this conversation. So, Tom, are you in agreement that if Washington wins, they're in, but if they don't, 
two Big Ten teams are in, or could the Big 12 champ get into the conversation? Actually, I'm of the opinion that even if Washington were to win the Pac-12 championship, you could still have an Ohio State included in that equation. I, I really believe that. I, I That's when you really start getting down to the best four teams. And, and, I, and, and that doesn't mean that we're negating the Pac-12 championship, but maybe the Pac-12 as a conference hasn't been what people expected it to be. Uh, they're reviewing whether indeed this was a touchback. Ruling in the field is that it was not touched and controlled prior, but it looks from that angle, again, it's so hard because the, the angle doesn't show you where the ball is. It's not the feet of the player for South Carolina. It, it's where the ball is. Remember, we have to have indisputable video evidence to change the call. Samuel touches it there for South Carolina, close. I just don't see how you can tell anything indisputable from that replay. It tells me without a doubt that the ball is caught and controlled prior to the nose of the ball crossing the end zone. This is going to be a, a touchback. Just everything that could have gone wrong for South Carolina has to this point. They just have really struggled to find anything. After further review, the ruling all the field stands. So that language there tells you exactly what you just said. There's just not enough video evidence to change it. So Clemson will have the ball in the 20. 48, uh, 47 seconds left. Two timeouts and a 28-0 lead. Deshaun Watson with three touchdown passes in the first half and 31 now in the season. Toss out on the flat to Scott. And he's trying to get out of bounds. And steps out close to the first down marker. 40 seconds to go. Most offenses would say 47 seconds left, up 28 points. Let's take it to the locker room and come back out and play the next 30 minutes. Not Clemson. They want to run their two-minute offense and try to steal some points before the half. And against a rival, you know they're not going to let up. Watson down the sideline, and it's caught by Leggett. And Leggett wrapped up at the 41 of South Carolina, and Clemson in business with 30 seconds left. Leggett just climbs the ladder. He's actually going against D.J. Wanham who's listed as a defensive end, but does occasionally move to the exterior and play in coverage from time to time. That's a mismatch and a good job of Deshaun Watson identifying it. Leggett, one of three finalists for the Mackey Award. Best tight end. Watson on the money to Williams. They're picking apart this South Carolina defense. In just 23 seconds, they move from their 20 to South Carolina's 22. Tremendous tempo. They're used to playing at a high level, and of course, they've been very mindful of the sideline, stopping the clock on every reception. Watts into the sideline, Williams again, and the clock stopped with 21 seconds left. I'll tell you, Greg, when you consider how you have to defend this offense, you referenced it earlier, you got to defend the whole field. you got to defend every nook and cranny. We've seen every available throw that you can have in an offense uh, tonight out of this scheme, and they've effectively run the football. I don't know how you're supposed to come up with the answers right now if you're South Carolina on defense. It's tough. You have to have tremendous front players, and South Carolina has good players, just not very deep. Watson, wide open in the end zone. He had... Leggett but overthrew him he jumped as he threw the ball that time I don't know if he just got excited seeing Leggett running wide open or what but he got some pressure as well coming in his face not the most traditional version of the jump pass <laughs> that we saw from Tim Tebow and others over the course of the last decade in college football he had a guy breathing fire in his face so probably trying to protect himself a little bit on third and four, Watson fires complete. Williams is free in the middle of the field. Williams to the end zone, his third touchdown of the first half.
And perhaps the Heisman race is on. What looked like a slam dunk a couple weeks ago with Lamar Jackson at Louisville. Perhaps others are getting back into the thick of things, including the Clemson quarterback. Four touchdowns in the first half for Deshaun Watson, 32 on the season. And it is a first half thrashing, 35 0 Clemson. Mike Williams went over 1,000 yards receiving on the season last week against Wake Forest. He's going to add to that total, obviously. Up into the hundreds right now. And a handful of touchdowns. It's just a great job after the catch. This is twice now that he has broken numerous tackles on his way to pay dirt. Deshaun Watson had some pressure on that one. Got it out very quickly. Extremely accurate. Allowing his receiver to carry momentum all the way through on the screen. And they are fired up, man. This team... They are really confident. This is a confident bunch right now. They learned a lot about themselves two weeks ago when they came up short against Pitt. But they have responded with remarkable maturity. It's exactly what you would have expected from this team under the adverse circumstances that they've faced. Well, they've had so many close games, five wins by seven points or less. They, they barely beat North Carolina State because of a missed field goal by the Wolf Pack. The close win at Florida State, at Louisville here at home, and then the loss to Pitt. Here's Samuel reversing field and brought down to the 26-yard line, and that ends the first half. A first half completely dominated by Deshaun Watson in his final home game. Four touchdown passes for Watson. Clemson 35 to nothing over South Carolina. Tom Luganville will talk with Dabo Sweeney. Now back to the studio though in Edinburgh. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. It's all Clemson here in this rivalry game. 35 to nothing. Over South Carolina, the Tigers win the night, win the ACC championship. You would think they're in the college football playoff. And she's not the only one throwing flames. Deshaun Watson with four <laughs> touchdown passes in the first half. And remember, Greg, Deion Kane had a touchdown pass go right through his hands. So it could be a lot worse than 35 nothing. But, man, Watson was awesome in that first half. Incredible. And he's done this every single opportunity that he's had against the South Carolina Gamecocks. 18-24. 251 yards, four touchdowns, throwing the ball vertically, extremely accurate, great decision making. If there's been an open wide receiver running wearing an orange jersey, he's found them. He does have the interception. However, that interception came off the hands of one of the intended wide receivers. He's been lights out tonight. It's exactly where he needed to be if he's trying to not only get his team the victory, but try to get back involved in the Heisman conversation. Great start for the junior quarterback. And as you said, a junior, but this will be his final game. They did senior day two weeks ago against Pitt. Dabo doesn't like to do it against his rival, so they actually had the senior celebration two weeks ago, and there are four juniors who are going to graduate. Deshaun Watson is one of them. And all four guys expected to declare for the NFL draft. A little pooch kickoff, but fair caught at the 33-yard line as we check in with Tom. Well, guys, first I asked Dabo Sweeney if he'd like our crew to broadcast all of his games as we had the 54 to nothing contest against Syracuse a few weeks back. And it's tough to ask a coach a question who's up like this at halftime because you haven't had many things go wrong. And we pointed out the missed opportunity down by the sideline with the drop by Deion Kane, the tip ball that turned into an interception. He said it was his defense, not the offense, that set this team up for success here tonight as they've been dominant in the trenches. Yeah, Jake Bentley only threw for 41 yards as Gallman on first down picks up a couple. Plus, uh, South Carolina had just 11 rushing yards on 14 attempts. If, so, if Clemson's going to win a national championship, you know obviously Deshaun Watson has to play well, but uh, that defense can match up with any offense in college football. Here's a pitch to McLeod on the end around, and he's got the first down. 
Going back to Clemson's defense, I think in 2016 college football, you have to have two things to win a national championship. You have to have a quarterback that plays smart, that delivers the ball accurately, and that can change the game, which Deshaun Watson does almost on a weekly basis. And you have to have an outstanding defensive line group. Every championship team seems to have them. Wayne Gallman getting the carry. There's Watson out there just sticking his rear end out to get a block. And Gallman around the right edge is inside the 30-yard line. Watson did enough to help spring his tail back for a big run. Another thing that you need to win a national championship, you have to be balanced offensively. This Clemson team running the football tonight on the heels of Wayne Gallman. This is what we want to see from them as they move forward into some of their more difficult contests. Oh, Gallman takes a shot there as he picks up five yards. D.J. Smith with the hit. Gallman is over 100 rushing yards again. That's 17 career 100-yard games. That's a Clemson record, but he's going to feel that hit in the morning. He's gone over 100 yards in each of his three seasons and games against South Carolina, too. He's going to be feeling that one, like you said. Nice lick by the safety, D.J. Smith. So C.J. Fuller, who had a few carries in the first half, is out there for second down and five. And here is Fuller getting the first down straight ahead. Not much resistance from South Carolina's defense in this game. Coleman missed the game earlier this season due to injury. And shaken up on this drive. Some would argue that Wayne Gallman doesn't really get the ball enough. Talked to a couple of Division I coaches that have played against Clemson. They expect him to get a heavy dose as the season continues. Watson, another perfect pass. Touchdown, C.J. Fuller. Oh, Watson almost, or make that uh, Deion Kane almost hurt himself in the celebration. But look at this throw. A gorgeous throw. Absolutely gorgeous. Before the pass, holding number 11 defense. The penalties decline. Touchdown. You're taught when you're throwing to running backs, you have to be perfect because more often than not, they're not the most natural pass catchers. Deshaun Watson made it about as easy as he possibly could on C.J. Fuller, who secured Watson's fifth touchdown pass tonight. It is 42 to nothing as Deshaun Watson now has 33 passing touchdowns in the season. C.J. Fuller had three catches for one net yard coming into tonight. Now he's got a receiving touchdown, and the Tigers are pounding their rivals. Dosa Keys, I know that they went through a lengthy process to identify the new most interesting man, Tom Luganbill. Did you submit your name for the possibility of taking over? No, they couldn't handle the boots. <laughs> That's not, not the only thing they couldn't handle with you, Tom. Not quite interesting <laughs> enough, I suppose, is Mr. Tom Luganbill. However, he did do a snow angel <laughs> in the big house just a week ago. Recovered a fumble in a hurricane as well as South Carolina. Alex to take a knee there, so it'll come out to the 25. And Clemson has never shut out South Carolina here at Memorial Stadium. The largest win in this series was 51 to nothing, but that was back in 1900. Second largest was uh, 45 nothing in uh, Columbia, 1989, and it is 42 to nothing. As uh, Jake Bentley not going here in the second half. Brandon McIlwain, who started three games this year but has not played in the last three games, starts the second half for South Carolina. McIlwain, a true freshman like Bentley. He's 18 years old. Throws complete to Hayden Hurst. That pass, a laser, 19 yards and a first down. Talk about getting off to a fast start. I think this is a smart decision by Will Muschamp and offensive coordinator Kurt Roper. The offensive line has had a very difficult time protecting Jake Bentley, so you opt for McIlwain, who's more elusive and has the ability to create as a runner. 
run play. Dowdle straight ahead. And he's able to pick up the first down. Well, you saw the graphic that senior Perry Orth has started three games as well. McElwain enrolled in January. Here's Samuel out in space. Brought down immediately, though, on the catch. McElwain's had his moments. I mean, he's a talented kid. A lot of South Carolina fans felt as though he could be the future. Had a nice spring. A lot of people thought he might start the opener against Vanderbilt. They opted for Perry Orth, but he's had moments as a college player, even though he's only a true freshman. McElwain trying to set up the wide receiver screen that was read well and almost picked off by Christian Wilkins, dropping in coverage, and now a penalty flag is thrown. Yeah, how good is Wilkins? Again, a 310-pound defensive end. After the play, personal foul on Hussey Ruckus, number 42 defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Boy, that is a terrible call. Wilkins off balance, trying to tip. Well, actually, now looking at the replay, that actually looks like a good call. I take it back. Looking at the replay there, he definitely extended the arm and pushed. I still wouldn't call it. I mean, I, I understand that the extracurricular shove at the end, but I don't think there was anything malicious there that warranted a 15-yard penalty and a fresh set of downs. Uh, second thought, I, I do think they got it right, Mac. I initially thought no, but I think they did get it correct. Here, here's going to be a pass, and the catch made by Edwards stays in bounds. Touchdown. Debo Samuel throwing to Brian Edwards, the best pass of the game for South Carolina. And the fans boo here because the shutout is gone. Great execution. Beautiful throw from Samuel. A wonderful job by Edwards, tight roping the sideline, scoring a touchdown. Edwards is going to be a heck of a player. He reminds me a little bit of Keyshawn Johnson. Big body, very physical. He has a bright future. And how about Debo Samuel? Kick return for touchdown, now passing touchdown. Day to stream college football live. We were doing it on the drive over, watching the end of the Ohio State Michigan game on the Watch ESPN app. You can download the app or visit watchespn.com today. So they get 52 yards in their first nine drives and then go 75 on the last drive, a 33-yard touchdown pass by wide receiver Debo Samuel. He's a wide receiver who doesn't have a receiving touchdown, but he has a rushing touchdown, a passing touchdown, and a kick return for a touchdown this year. He's versatile, man. Since he's been back and healthy, his offense has looked a little bit different. And McElwain engineering that drive at the quarterback position. Here's Scott bringing it out on the kick return. He gets to the 20. And some extracurricular activity afterwards. Fans didn't like the takedown there, but everything subsides. Well, Kirk Collingsworth tonight is attending his 293rd straight South Carolina game. The streak started back in 1992. He's missed one game. His cousin got married back in 92, but he's made it to every game since. Now, Kirk has cerebral palsy, so he travels by bus to a lot of these games, often takes the scooter or his wheelchair to the games. And we got a chance to talk with Kirk, our crew did this week, and want to give him a shout-out. He is a South Carolina super fan, although it's been rough to watch today with South Carolina getting run over, and literally they were on that play. C.J. Fuller just ran over the defensive end, D.J. Wanham. I'll say this about South Carolina. And I had the great fortune of playing in williams Bryce. and fortunately came out on the losing end of that one. But those fans love their football team. They are as supportive a group of fans as I've been around, and I'm grateful to know several of them. Obviously, Mr. Hollingsworth is one of them. Another run play on second down, and Fuller gets the first down. Again, Wayne Gallman was shaken up on the last drive. Fuller who caught a touchdown pass on the last possession. Moves the chains, picking up 10 yards. 
Have to wonder after the big hit that Wayne Gallman took on the last drive if it's going to be Fuller, Choice, and Feaster the rest of the night at running back. Snap was a little high, but he talked about the quick release. Look how quickly he got that ball down and then threw it out in space for a gain of a couple of yards there to DeAndre Overton. Gets it out so quick, and what that does is it buys time for the wide receivers to decipher which move they're going to go with. The defenders can't break fast enough, so even when it is a high snap, he's able to deliver an accurate football and still turn it into a positive play. Here's Fuller. Got a couple of offensive linemen pushing him closer to the first down marker. Comes up just short. Bring up third down here for the Tigers. You know, the one thing, Greg, you talk about with that quick release and, and, and allowing those receivers to do what they do best. The other thing that stands out to me is you can't rush Deshaun Watson. The ball's out so quickly. If you're going to apply pressure and you're going to come after him, you, you, you can't disguise it because you won't get to him. And that's something that is, is, I think it's innate. Guys can either do it or they can't do it. That's why coaches covet quick releases so much. They pick up the first down here. Fuller moving the chains. Brought down by Steven Montak. But Fuller came in with only 33 carries and three catches. Getting a lot of work now with Gallman's injury. Talking to Jeff Scott. One of the offensive coordinators yesterday, he said in a perfect world, we want to have 500 yards of offense. Now they might pass that tonight, but they'd love to have 300 through the air, 200 on the ground. That's their ideal ratio past a rush. That's going to be a point of emphasis for them moving forward to continue to move the ball on the ground because you know Deshaun Watson's going to get his yards through the air. That was Adam Choice on the carry. They're going to get 500 yards on this drive. They're at 471 before that last play. There's Scott. And along with Tony Ellett, have done a really nice job taking over since Chad Morris left for SMU. Choice brought down in the backfield by... Bryson Allen Williams. And again, so much at stake for Clemson. Assuming it wins this game, it has Virginia Tech next week in the ACC championship game, which will be on ABC. Win that game, and they're going to be in the playoff for the second straight year. They were the one seed going in last year and went toe to toe with Alabama before falling in one of the great championship games we've ha ever had. 45 40 was the final score in Glendale. Watson with a ton of time. Receiver comes free. It's Kane getting the first down to the 30-yard line. They're right at 500 yards as a team. They pick up 34 there. 502 to be exact, my friend. Great anticipation and just a perfect throw. That's not an easy throw for a quarterback. Seeing where the defenders aren't, throwing it down the field 20-plus yards and delivering it right on the face mask of Kane. Deshaun Watson makes difficult throws look so easy, and he does it time and time again. He's over 300 passing yards now on the day. Going to go to the end zone again, and another beautiful throw. Touchdown, Kane, but there's a flag. Kane looked like he pushed off on the defender, Stephen Montag. Hey, this is going to be offensive pass interference. Pass interference, number eight, offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Yeah, we could see that live. Looked like it was a good call by the official. I know that the history of this rivalry, there is a play that's eloquently referred to as the push off <laughs> or the catch, I believe, depending on which side you're right, on. Exactly, right. Yeah. I don't know if that will be remembered in such infamy or lore, but clearly a push off and a good call by the officials. That would have been touchdown number six for Deshaun Watson. Instead, it's first and 25 on the South Carolina 45-yard line. He whips it out to McLeod past the 40-yard line. McLeod gets the first down. And a violent tackle there on the sideline by Smith, but no penalty flag. So here's what you're talking about here. That's Dantzler throwing the ball and then a push off. 
setting up the game-winning field goal. Yeah, that's so I know that it depends on which way you view that play. You either love it or you can't stand it. The play looked a little bit similar, though, from Kane. Adam Choice stumbles to the 28-yard line. on Clemson. Didn't hear it from the referee. Davo's not happy about it. Perhaps just a sideline warning. Again, couldn't hear it, but the flag didn't drop, and they didn't march the ball back at all, so it's third down and seven. Watson with another strike. Kane on the catch to the 14-yard line. 13-yard pickup, another first down. Watson is well over 300 yards. In his last home game, he threw for almost 600 yards, and that lost to Pitt. That was an ACC record, 580 Watson put up on the board. Here's Adam Choice picking a hole and getting in the 9-yard line. So remarkable to see this Clemson offense. You have a touchdown wiped off the board. You're sitting there now after an offensive pass interference, first and 25. Two plays, you're immediately back with a fresh set of downs, and you keep the drive going. This team answers the call. Have they looked great every single time out? No. But they seem to respond to adversity extremely well. 13th play of the drive, it's Scott. Banged out of bounds, but close to a first down. You can make the argument this has been their most complete performance of the year. Again, it's against a team that is under 500 in its conference, but in South Carolina, a winning record. It's a rivalry game, and Clemson has absolutely dominated on both sides of the football. They've had so many close games this year. Now, they've beaten good teams. They, they knocked off Auburn, Florida State, Louisville. They had a game here at home where they probably should have lost to NC State. Watson throwing a fade. Jump ball. Touchdown. Artavis Scott. Another flag is down. Who are they going to get here? They got Kane for offensive pass interference. Pass interference. Going to Number three defense. The penalties decline. Touchdown. So there is touchdown number five for Watson. Scott, who is playing his final home game. With a touchdown catch, six touchdown pass for Watson, excuse me. It's just fighting for the football. Contact on both sides. They called pass interference on Lamb, but that really could have gone either way. That's just fighting for it, wanting it more than the defender. It is 49 to 7, Clemson. Six. Touchdown passes for Deshaun Watson. Artavis Scott with his fifth of the season. 19th career, that's fourth most in Clemson history. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Ford. We go further so you can. And Jiffy Lou, we do more than just oil changes. All in a Jiffy. Another thrilling day of college football. How about James Franklin and the turnaround at Penn State as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton, part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lou. The Nittany Lions are in the Big Ten Championship game. Ohio State is in the clubhouse waiting to see if it will make the college football playoff. Currently sitting at number two, beat its rival Michigan today in double overtime. Alabama undefeated regular season and will now face Florida in the SEC Championship game as Samuel makes it back to the 30. You'd have to think at this point as uh, Alabama beat Auburn today 30-12 to in the Iron Bowl. Even if Alabama loses next week, which isn't probably going to happen, but if the Tide were to lose, 
They're still getting in, right? If you look at the entire body of work, I don't see how you can keep them out. And, and look, I expect them, of course, to win against the Florida Gators. However, Florida does play outstanding defense, and that will be a challenge for Alabama, considering Jim McElwain, former coordinator there at Alabama, now head coach of Florida. He knows that team like the back of his hand. You did a really good job, so all the Florida fans now will not tweet at you and get upset. <laughs> as, boy, McElwain absolutely got smoked, but that pass was right there. Samuel couldn't haul it in, in part because of the defense from Marcus Edmond. I think, without question, Alabama is likely to be the number one seed. But Clemson is making a great case for the number two seed. Look at the pressure. It's just relentless. Even when you don't have the starters in, Albert Huggins there listed as a backup to Watkins, still applying the pressure on McElwain. McElwain running here, and he stood up by Smith after a game of about three. So you mentioned seeding. Now, Clemson still has to beat Virginia Tech next week to get into the college football playoff. But if we're talking body of work, and you look at all the close games that they played, I still think Ohio State is ahead of Clemson because the Buckeyes have the Oklahoma win. They have the win at Wisconsin. And their one loss was on a blocked field goal return for a touchdown. But the committee values conference championships won, which could in a very difficult way to determine between the two, could give Clemson the boost over Ohio State. McElwain has the ball stripped, and Bulwer wanted to pick it up and score. Instead, Dowdle's got it, and he's finally shoved out of bounds. Bulwer hacked it out of McElwain's arm, and his eyes got big. He saw Pater a touchdown in the rivalry game. He just couldn't pick up the ball. So difficult when the ball's just sitting there. Look at the pressure. Bulware coming off the right edge, winning very easily and getting a hand on the football. Great effort by the outstanding linebacker. Every time you watch this Clemson defense, you're blown away by a few things. One, how good they are up front and how deep they are up front. Two, their secondary and how they close on the football when it's in the air. Third, certainly not last, Ben Bulware's a stud. Go to Adnan in the studio. During the kick. And a matchup with Washington next week. There was a penalty marker on the play. Block in the back on Clemson and Deshaun Watson's done for the day. Nick Schusler is going to come in. Now, this is interesting. Look, the game's over. Clemson's going to win. But with the six touchdown passes for Deshaun Watson, you would imagine he's creeping back. If he wasn't in the minds already, the Heisman voters, he's back in their heads. Now, he's still had a great game of six touchdown passes, but the way things are going, he might be able to get a couple more. There's no question. I'm a Heisman voter, and... I can assure you, I'm going to think long and hard about the performance that Deshaun Watson's had tonight. So many people came in with unbelievable expectations for that young man this season, statistically and what they've done offensively. But he belongs, I think, on everyone's ballot, given his body of work, his leadership qualities, and how in the biggest moments he seems to provide us with the biggest plays of the season. I'll tell you, Greg, he's also been helped out by Louisville's previous two weeks. No question. The wrong place at the wrong time. If you're studying Deshaun Watson, you don't think he's in the top two or three for the Heisman Trophy. You're not watching college football. How about true freshman Tavian Feaster moving the sticks? We showed you those numbers, and he almost had to, like, do a double take. He has as many touchdowns as he has incompletions <laughs> in this game. Lamar Jackson has brought himself back to the pack the last couple of weeks. He still has to be the favorite, but Watson's right there. But traditionally, voters have heavily valued what the candidate's team has done. Clemson wins, obviously, tonight. Clemson wins next week. And Deshaun Watson has a big day against Virginia Tech. There's going to be a lot of consideration 
for number four. Well, nobody's talking about Baker Mayfield tonight because he's not playing. Right. But if he were to beat Oklahoma State next week and have a big game, or if Westbrook has a big game, that's the problem is Baker Mayfield and D.D. Westbrook, quarterback, wide receiver, respectively, for the Oklahoma Sooners, I think they might split some votes between the two because it's tough to decipher who's more important and who's more valuable to their team. Schusler on second and nine. And throws it behind McLeod. That was a live ball. McLeod did a good job to catch that thing. Otherwise, that would have been a fumble. Antoine Wilder was out there. So it's third down here for Clemson. I'll tell you, Greg, to your point, uh, as it relates to, to Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield and D.D. Westbrook, again, two losses. You know, outside of RG3, it's tough to find a Heisman winner that wasn't on an undefeated or, you know, a one-loss team. And the numbers for... RG3 were just ridiculous yeah. that you, you had to vote him as the Heisman winner that year. I will say this, guys, and getting back to your, your, your discussion on, on where you put Ohio State, we've seen them a couple of times. We've now seen Clemson a couple of times. Ohio State's not playing the same football this team here in Orange is playing. Schusler sacked by Marquavius Lewis. But I think you also have to look at the, 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 the level of the opponents, right, guys? I mean, Ohio State playing Michigan today. I know you could say, well, Michigan State last week, that's a game they should win by much more, but that has become a rivalry game. South Carolina, this is their first warning. Sideline warning on South Carolina, fourth down here for Clemson. They're just not in sync, Dave, on offense the way this Clemson yeah. team is. No, it's a great point. Look, Ohio State, it's been that, like that all year. It's been a struggle offensively. I mean, yeah. they had that back-to-back 60-point -back games, but otherwise they've been extremely inconsistent offensively. You're right. Just JT Barrett. I don't think he's the same player throwing it that Deshaun Watson is. Totally, I agree with and that. And it all revolves around the quarterback position when you look at both Clemson and Ohio State's offenses. I also think the supporting cast that Clemson has, particularly a wide receiver, I think they are a little bit better than what we see from Penalties the Buckeyes. decline, fourth down. They decline the delay a game penalty. You know, it may end up being that uh, they get to decide it on the field, Clemson and Ohio State. Sure. <laughs> Going back and forth between who should be two, who should be three, all that really changes is what jersey color you wear. Right. And the punt nearly blocked. And Clemson will down it at the three. Tankersley was down there for the Tigers. Expedia reminds us that we're at Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, this SEC-ACC matchup. It has been all Tigers. Deshaun Watson early and often. He ties his career high and the ACC record with six passing touchdowns. Three of them in the first half to star wide receiver Mike Williams. Both players playing their final home games. But obviously they have bigger things on their mind and that's getting back to the national championship game this time winning it well, fell to Alabama last year a win next week for Clemson in the ACC title game and you'd think the committee will put them in the top four AJ Turner to the 10 yard line see if that's the final play of the third really excited about this Clemson team I, I think back to last year and seeing them play against North Carolina in the ACC championship, it wasn't a real complete performance. Right. Obviously, the onside kick, there was some drama, there was some controversy. Clemson, of course, was the better team. That was very obvious, and they deserved to win, but the improvement they made in the month of December during bowl practices was something special, because when they came back out, they were ready to roll. They don't need to improve much on this performance. It's been all Clemson here at Death Out. Watching the ACC on ESPN. Clemson knocking off South Carolina through three quarters, 49-7. Wayne Gallman on this hit by DJ Smith, shaken up in the third quarter. Probably wouldn't be in the game anyway because of the score. But we we're told that he will not return. He was injured 
in the North Carolina State game. But then returned after the bye week to score two touchdowns in their win over Florida State. Gallman with over 100 rushing yards in this game. Clemson record 17 100 yard games for his career. Here's A.J. Turner on the carry, short of the first down. So it'll bring up third down for South Carolina. Not much has gone right for the Gamecocks in this game. They had 52 yards in the first half. Their only touchdown came on a trick play. Debo Samuel, the wide receiver, throwing a touchdown pass in the third quarter. Just haven't been able to generate enough on first down. And every time they take a step forward, that Clemson defensive front resists. Usually results in a tackle for a loss. Brandon McElwain had to take that snap and hand it off quickly to Hurst. Did a good job. Hurst picking up the first down. McElwain, a true freshman, in for true freshman Jake Bentley, who started the game, but McElwain started the second half. The Q provided a little spark, too. That first drive, obviously, of the second half was outstanding. Going the distance. Debo Samuel with the touchdown pass. I'm excited to see this. South Carolina team here in a few weeks when they get to their bowl site. A lot of young players that should develop nicely over the 15 bowl practices. They have doubled their win total from last year in Will Muschamp's first season. McElwain able to drop it to Samuel. Nice cut by Samuel getting the first down. He gets leveled by Trey Lamar afterwards, but able to move the sticks there. One of the things, too, about this South Carolina program going forward, guys, in recruiting, uh, this is a state that's only got about 4 million people, but it has a lot of nooks and crannies and areas where you can find some really good gems. And being at a place like South Carolina, you don't necessarily have the pressure on you, if you're Will Muschamp, to always have to take that five-star guy or that four-star guy you can not only take the good player, but the right player and develop them. So a guy like running back Rico Dowdle, he's a prime example out in that Asheville, North Carolina, lightly recruited. Nobody blinks an eye when you sign a guy like that. Next thing you know, he becomes a great player for you. I think that gives this program a lot of freedom in their recruiting efforts to, to lay down the blueprint and build this roster. And Will Muschamp can sell playing time early. So many recruits value that extremely high on their list of priorities. Proof's in the pudding with all the freshmen already having success for them now. McElwain running the football and getting the first down before he's picked up and tackled by Tanner Muse. 12 yard pick up there for McElwain. Muschamp got the job. A lot of people wondered, okay, how would he be able to break into South Carolina? How could he steal some of the thunder from the Clemson Tigers and Tom they've done a really good job putting together a staff that has familiarity with the state of South Carolina and they've developed some really good relationships with high school coaches in the state well they have and, and Bobby Bentley of course uh, one of the most successful high school coaches in the history of this state has deep roots deeply established relationships that certainly helps and then you border of course on Georgia, you border on North Carolina, and the staff's already got previous tremendous roots in the state of Florida. So the, the recruiting pool, I think, has expanded and gotten so much better under Will Muschamp's leadership to include more options to be a Gamecock. McElwain overthrows an open receiver, Corey Banks. Well, there was a lot of discussion last year before Will Muschamp got hired that South Carolina wanted to hire Tom Herman. And I'm sure you saw the news today that Herman uh, is going to be the new head coach at Texas, replacing Charlie Strong. LSU moved quickly when it realized that Herman was not going to take the LSU job and promoted Ed Orgeron, removing the interim tag. I'm excited to see what Tom Herman does. I know things didn't go what they wanted them to go in Austin, finishing 5-7. and seven. That's a young roster that I think could win immediately next year. McElwain, nice run, picking up the first down. And scoots out of play at the 36-yard line. I'm with you on the Tom Herman hire. The one that's a little bit of a head-scratcher is what LSU did. And nothing against Ed Orgeron, but look, hiring the interim guy, I can think of one guy off the top of my head where it's worked in the last decade, and he's coaching this game. 
Dabo Sweeney. I mean, there haven't been a lot of interim coaches that, when given the head coaching job have improved the program, especially at a place like LSU where there's so many options out there of successful head coaches. McElwain dumps it off to A.J. Turner. And he's to the 31. And back to Ed Orgeron. He was the interim coach. He did a great job in the interim and got that team ready to play in all but two games. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I just don't understand why they had to make the call today. Why they couldn't wait a couple more weeks and look and explore some different options. Why don't you call Mike McIntyre at Colorado? Why don't you call P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan? If Ed Orgeron is still the best possible candidate, then by all means hire him, but you don't have to hire him so quickly before doing a lot of due diligence on other candidates. Well, it seems like, you know, we see it so often when that, that it was an emotional decision. And look, this is a business. In business, when you make emotional decisions, usually those are the wrong decisions. Yeah. And Ed Orgeron has done a nice job as the interim coach. Obviously, the players love him. People in Louisiana love him. He's a hometown guy. But I agree with you on the timing. It just was strange to do it today. A delayed shovel pass is nearly intercepted, but it's incomplete. I'm really sure what Brandon McElwain was thinking there. What we're talking about, you know, removing the interim tag. Remember Dabo Sweeney, his victory against South Carolina eight years ago, that secured the job for him. And you look at now what he's been able to do. This is six consecutive 10-win seasons. They won 14 last year. This will be win number 11 tonight. One step closer to a college football playoff berth if they can win the ACC championship against Virginia Tech. McElwain on fourth down. Can't throw that pass. Never had a chance to get to the sticks. And they turn it over on down. Mark Fields, good coverage there. 49-7 Clemson. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville at Clemson. The Tigers all over South Carolina, 49-7 as Clemson tries to get its 11th win of the season. Rivalry series presented by Jiffy Loop as we Got you covered, brought to you by Jiffy Luke. Clemson's defense tonight, a big story, with eight tackles for a loss and three sacks. They held South Carolina to 52 yards in the first half. What were you more impressed with tonight, Deshaun Watson or <laughs> the defense for Clemson? It has to be Deshaun Watson. This defense has played well the last few weeks, and he made them look very average over the course of the night. Tyshawn Dye is in the game and gets the carry with Nick Schusler still in there at quarterback. And Dye thrown to the ground, but Clemson players don't retaliate there. John Simpson, a true freshman backup guard, is injured for Clemson. There was pushing and shoving in pregame, but really nothing substantial in the way of extracurriculars in game. Back in a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Book at Hampton.com for a guaranteed discount. And in part by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Well, it's the first time that the Clemson crowd has been quieted in this game, and that's because true freshman John Simpson is being helped onto the cart here after being injured on the last play. I certainly hope he's okay. Saw a good exchange there between Will Muschamp and Dabo Sweeney. And you can watch him right here. He just gets rolled up a little bit as the pile kind of comes around. You can see him fall awkwardly. <laughs> Certainly hope he's okay. Mm. It looks like he's in a lot of pain right now and a lot of disappointment on his face. 
hoping for the best for him. He is a backup guard, true freshman from North Charleston, South Carolina. Clemson has had the backups in since the latter part of the third quarter. And now the crowd erupts again as they see the thumbs up from Simpson. So Clemson on top, 49-7. It's second and six for the Tigers on their 36. Nick Schusler is in the game, a quarterback. He threw for two touchdowns. And a backup role against Syracuse in a 54-0 win three weeks ago. Deshaun Watson hurt his right shoulder in that game, and we weren't sure if he was going to be able to go the next week against Pitt. He comes out and he throws for almost 600 yards. They lost that game, but he had the game of his life as uh, Powell gets the catch and is out near midfield. Take a look at tonight's AFLAC trivia question. South Carolina and Clemson have met every year since 1909. That is the second longest active and uninterrupted series among current FBS teams. Which two teams have the longest? And I'm not going to allow our sideline analyst, Tom Luganville, to answer this question. <laughs> Why? Because, because Tom nearly froze to death uh, in one of those rivalry games a few years That's ago. That's right, because you know I know it. Thompson gets the first down for Clemson. So do you have a take? Well, I've been with you guys long enough this year to realize that Tom has complained about that particular game in Minnesota <laughs> enough to warrant me feeling bad for him on occasion. So I know that's one of the teams, and I'm trying to think of who it was against. I'm going to say Ohio State. No. I'll give you a hint. They played today. Come on. Tyshawn died at the 38-yard line. Remember the Axe? They play for the Axe, <laughs> Wisconsin and Minnesota. They played every season since 1906. That's the answer to our Affleck trivia question. I want Greg to broadcast <laughs> a game with Vaseline wiped all over his face. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love that I had just answered that one incorrectly on purpose just so you could make fun of me because I was giving you a hard time. Yeah, now. I bet. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I know who Ohio State's rival is. <laughs> Tyshawn Jai just moving the pile at a fistful of one of the defenders. Now speaking of uh, the axe, there it is, Wisconsin. Now in the Big Ten Championship game against Penn State next week. They were trailing 17-10. Hornybrook, their quarterback, got hurt in that game. But what a year for Paul Christ and the Badgers. They, one of their losses was at Michigan by a touchdown. Their other was at home in overtime to Ohio State. Guy trying to fight off tacklers and gets a yard. Going back to Wisconsin, coming into the season, you looked at their schedule and you said, man, it's going to be tough for them to get to seven, eight wins. But sure enough, now they're in the Big Ten Championship, 10 and 2, a couple of very close losses and a lot of very convincing wins against top quality competition in the Big Ten. Boy, the battle for coach of the year in the Big Ten, it's like the hottest race in the history of the conference in terms of coach of the year. As the catch is made by Cameron Smith, when you look at what James Franklin has done and what Paul Christ has done, their respective schools. Yeah. And then, of course, you got two of the best coaches in the game, Jim Harbaugh and Urban Meyer. Can't forget about them. Mike Riley at Nebraska, too. I mean, if you want to throw his hat in the, in the ring, given where they were last year, 6-7, and 5-7 seven, and seven at the end of the regular season, tremendous improvement in Lincoln for the Cornhuskers. Midway through the fourth quarter here, third and seven for Clemson, and a timeout taken by the Tigers. Wow. Meanwhile, Clemson, 68-42-4 and four now in the series. This will be the first time in over a decade that they've won three straight in the series against South Carolina. Charlie Whitehurst won four in a row as the Clemson quarterback. Deshaun Watson, who is back in the game. Wayne Gallman is back in the game as well for this third down and seven. So is Mike Williams. He got the juniors who are playing their final home game. It's a standing ovation. 
These young men have meant so much for this program. Put them squarely in the national spotlight. When's the last time you've seen that, Greg, where you, you call a timeout, put the guys back on the field, get the ovation, call another timeout and take them out of the game? I love it. Because Dabo Sweeney understands what those individuals meant to not only this program, but to every single person wearing purple and orange here in Death Valley. Brought a lot of happiness to a lot of people here. And I think it's really special that he was willing to give them that tribute and put them on the field one more time here in Death Valley because you can see, according to R. Mel Kuyper, they're going to be making a lot of money playing football here in the very near future. Schusler on third down and seven will keep it and tackled at the 25-yard line. See what Clemson does here in fourth down, leading 49-7. Keep the offense on the field. We showed you when John Simpson was injured that uh, Dabo Sweeney and, and Will Muschamp were having a conversation and had a handshake. And there's a lot of respect between those two head coaches. There was respect between Dabo and Steve Spurrier, but they didn't like each other too much. There was, there was there, respect, but they didn't like each there other. There was respect, much. but there was the annual witty banter. Yes, as they led up to. The Palmetto Bowl. Fusler taken off on fourth down, trying to keep his balance. And he's got the first down. The grad student from Grayson, Georgia. Not as graceful as Deshaun Watson running the ball, but got the job done. Lost a shoe as well. Crowd erupting in shoe there when he picked up. The first down, but they might have been telling him that his shoe came off too. I mean, it was hard to tell which have been one. Both, I'm not really sure. Hard to decipher, no doubt. <laughs> Tyshawn Die getting the carry, fights to the 12-yard line. So the next game for Clemson, Virginia Tech, in the ACC championship game. And if the Tigers win that game, you would assume they'll be in the college football playoff. Dropped two spots two weeks ago after that home loss to Pitt. You would think with Michigan losing to Ohio State that they'll move up to three this week. We've got the uh, college football playoff ranking show for you on Tuesday night on ESPN. Feaster off the left side on second down. Come up just short. Bring up third, about two. No, guys, we were... You know, talking about the tribute that Dabo Sweeney just had with some of those seniors and, and the juniors that are departing early that have made such an impact on this program. When I was going back through the recruiting classes, when you look at the 2013 recruiting class, and you start scrolling through the names, and then you start putting the years together and realizing when this program had a renaissance, when did everything start changing? In that 2013 class, you had the corner Mackenzie Alexander, Shaq Lawson, Ben Bulware, who's been everywhere tonight. Mike Williams, the big receiver. All right. You have Cordrea Tankersley. Ryan Carter, the other starting corner. Tyrone Crowder, their starting guard. The list goes on and on and on. And that class that formed the nucleus for what Clemson football is right now, and it's a tribute to that staff of making the right decisions in recruiting. Feaster on the carry. Kelly Bryant handing it off to him. Well, there's no doubt that they've got it rolling now here at Clemson. And they had a big win against Auburn the year after Auburn won the national championship. And at that time, there, there was some fire under Dabo's seat, at least if you, you know, believe what a lot of the fans were saying here in Clemson and, and some of the, the, the local media about Dabo Sweeney. But that turned around their season in 2011. And this is their sixth straight double-digit win season. Bryant. Trying to get in, shoved out of bounds at the one. Big hit by Jonathan Walt. And they continue to bring in top flight recruits. No longer is Clemson limited just to the southeast. They can go all over the country now and pitch their product because of the performances that they've had in the national spotlight. This has become a national brand 
And it appears as though they're going to continue for the foreseeable future. Bryant to the end zone. Touchdown. 55 points for Clemson against its rival. been a great performance for the Clemson Tigers tonight. Clemson had to call a timeout there. They didn't have the right personnel on the field for the extra point. See Seth Ryan. It's Rex Ryan's son. Rob Ryan's nephew. He was yelling like his dad would have done. He's the holder for the field goal and extra points. He was fired up. Well, and then Dabo Sweeney was just telling the referee, Mark Curls, that he didn't want time out there. He would just rather have taken the penalty. Yeah. Extra point makes it 56-7. Well, the stars have shined brightly under the lights here at Clemson. Mike Williams, Deshaun Watson, Wayne Gallman. Among the juniors playing their final game here in front of the hometown fans, and they have done a terrific job with 56 points. Valley at a sports center at night with Bucci and Kevin Connors. Full recap and reactions from rivalry weekend and how it impacts the college football playoff rankings, NBA scores, college basketball scores. A look ahead to another NFL Sunday as well. Coming up, Sports Center at night here on ESPN. Clemson has put up 56 points on a bowl-eligible South Carolina team that had won four of five coming into this game and has been held to 168 yards of offense. It's a season low for the Gamecocks. Their previous low was 243. A.J. Turner had trouble with the football on the kickoff, and he will not make it to the 20. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at... Uh, our top four and the two teams just on the outside. So we all have Alabama, Washington, Ohio State, and Clemson. Luke's has Clemson ahead of Ohio State. I got to ask you guys, why do you guys still have Michigan in the top six? They've lost two of their last three, and Penn State and Wisconsin are playing for the Big Ten Championship next week. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> because Michigan beat Wisconsin on the head-to-head -head by seven points in their own backyard, and they also thumped Penn State by 39 early in the season. But I don't forget when it comes to things like that. I know you don't either, Tom. Yeah, I, I really, listen, they're a good football team. They were in a hard. Offside, number 94 defense made contact. Five-yard penalty, still first down. They were in a hard-fought, tough, fantastic football game today on the road. I just think they're still one of the top teams that are difficult to contend with, and I would put them in there. By the way, Carlos Watkins was the man offside. Interesting that he was in the game that time. They had all the seniors back out there. Did the same thing with them that yeah. they did with the offense. But So did he go offside on purpose there? I think so. More flags fly. I think he jumped off sides on purpose. To that, that's probably up. why Dabo was mad that they took the last time Substitution infraction, 12 minutes yeah. of formation, defense. He was mad Five they called a timeout the floor floor because I think he wanted to use that timeout there so that he... He didn't have to have their defense out to try to rub it in or anything against uh, the backups for South Carolina. I like the decision to take the forced offsides, I suppose. <laughs> Not as much of a send-up off as the offense got, but they certainly deserve it. What a performance by this Clemson defense tonight. Big hole here for Rod Talley. And he gets the first down. So the Clemson senior class with 46 wins. Their winning percentage is the best in school history. They'll finish with just two losses at Memorial Stadium. Last year, of course, losing to Bama in the college football playoff national championship game. 
And if they beat Virginia Tech next week in the ACC title game, they will compete for a championship again, making the college football playoff. Straight ahead, it's Tally, and he stood up and pushed back as the clock continues to run. Tom, you had Clemson ahead of Ohio State. Yeah, I've got Clemson ahead of Ohio State, and I also put SC at number six. I, I think that I place a lot of credence in are you peaking at the right time? Are you playing your best football down the stretch? Are you going into the, the break between now and when you will end up taking your bowl appearance? And what type of team are you then? And right now, as we talked a little bit earlier about Clemson, I just, I, I, they're so much better and dialed in right now on offense than where Ohio State is right now. And they're more experienced and I think deeper along the defensive front than Ohio State. Ohio State's young and talented, but they don't have this rotational group, in my opinion, that Clemson's got in their defensive front. Greg, why do you have Ohio State ahead of Clemson right now? Well, I just think Ohio State's body of work, they have beaten, obviously, a tremendous opponent in Oklahoma. They beat the number six team in the rankings, according to me. That's the Wisconsin Badgers. They, of course, beat Michigan. I just think the entire body of work right now through 12 games I would have them ahead of Clemson just ever so slightly. Tally gets the first down. ACC Big Ten challenges this week. And Tuesday at 9.30 on ESPN, it's Duke and Michigan State from Cameron Indoor. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. The penalty marker down back at the 38-yard line of South Carolina. I think all of us thought coming in that Clemson would win this game. But the way that it went down... Unnecessary roughness called on South Carolina. I, I didn't think it would be this kind of a thrashing, given how well South Carolina had played defensively the last month. But as the coaches said in the meetings yesterday, and Tom mentioned it in the open, the loss woke this team up yeah. two weeks ago. Gave them a sense of urgency. It taught them that... There are a lot of things that they can improve upon. They hadn't experienced adversity like that in the regular season in some time. Since Georgia Tech in the 2014 season, that was the last game they lost in the regular season. So it was a wake-up call, and it allowed the leadership to come to the forefront. And clearly, the last couple weeks, they've played like a team that is very focused. Tally pushed out of bounds. Yeah, they had won 23 straight regular season games and 21 in a row at home prior to that loss to Pittsburgh. They bounce back with the road win at Wake Forest, scoring touchdowns on their first four possessions last week. And they stopped South Carolina early here tonight, and now the Gatorade bath awaits. Jay Guillermo. And Dabo does a pretty good job. He saw it coming from Watkins. <laughs> Showed he still has the quicks from his days playing at Alabama. <laughs> they run tally here. He stood up. And unless South Carolina calls a timeout, that's going to end the game. They've doused Dabo at Gatorade so many times. I'm surprised they didn't have a backup plan if he evaded the first one. Good for these seniors going out in their final opportunity in Death Valley, going out a winner against their bitter in-state arch rival. And Dabo Sweeney embracing his quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Even though Watson a true junior, this is his final home game. And it was a great one. Watson with six touchdown passes as Clemson rolls. Hammering South Carolina 56-7. If the Tigers win next week in the ACC championship game against Virginia Tech, Clemson likely in the college football playoff for the second straight year. Watson had as many touchdown passes as incompletions in a rivalry game. Two years ago, he beat South Carolina on this field playing with a torn ACL. You would think it'd be hard to top that, but I think he did tonight. Coming up next on ESPN, it's Sports Center. Deshaun Watson and the Clemson Tigers improved to 11-1. South Carolina is going bowling but took it on the chin tonight against its rival here in Clemson. For Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Clemson.